Hello everyone. So in this little tutorial, we're going to look at creating a lovely snowstorm. But to do that, we're going to utilize some random numbers. So when you open Scratch, you will see, I'll just remove the cat here. You will see in the operator section, this command that says pick random. And when you double click on it like this, you will see it picks a random number. So in this case, it's six. Double click it again, it's four. If I change the values from, let's say, 20 to 80, it generates a random number. So this tool here, this command here, we're going to use quite a lot in this little project. I'll pop this away just now. So that's in operators. So what we're going to do first of all is we will create a different backdrop, a nice dark backdrop. So go to backdrops. And I will convert to bitmap, which if you can't see is down here, where it says convert, make sure it's on bitmap mode. Choose the paint tool, choose a fill. I'm going to choose a gradient fill with two colors. Let's say black and purple. That looks nice to me. And click in there. And this, I've just painted in the background this black and purple, a bit like a dark kind of night. And then I'm going to go and paint a new sprite. And my sprite is simply going to be a white circle with no outline. Transparent. So no outline. Make my fill solid again. Sorry. There we go. Just make it white. Press circle. I'm going to hold the shift key down to get a nice circle. And there's my circle there. I'm going to try and place it in the center. So this ultimately is going to be our snowflake. Now, I know it's a bit big just now, but we'll soon change those as we go along. So I'm going to just name my sprite snowflake so I know what it is. If you want to make it something that's not a circle, you absolutely can. But now what we're going to do is we're going to basically code this sprite to appear randomly at the top and fall down to the bottom and then disappear. So let's go and do that in the code section. So the first thing we'll do, we'll do one single snowflake first. So we'll do that by going to events and when the green flag is clicked, we want to tell it to go to a random place along the top here. Now, remember when you're looking at your stage in Scratch, you can tell the position of your sprite by the X and the Y coordinate here. So the Y is the vertical position and the X is the horizontal position. So I want my snowflakes to start appearing around about here, which my Y is 138 and my X here says minus 185. So I'm going to say motion go to and it's picked up the fact that X is 185 and Y is 147. I'll just make this more of a normal number. 160, there we go. When I press the green flag, it's going to go to that position there. But I want this to appear at random at any point across the top. So to do that, I'm going to go to my pick random, which is in operators, and say pick any random number between minus 185 and positive 185. And put that in to my X coordinate there. So what I now see when I press the green flag is that any time I press the green flag, it picks a random position, like so. The other thing I want to do is I don't always want my snowflakes to look the same size. So I want to, get to change its size at random as well. So I can go to Looks, and I can go to Set Size 2, and by default it's 100%. So this is 100% of the, the actual size it is. But what I'd like to do is again go to Random, pick Random, and let's say, let's set that between 20% and 70% of the actual size that it is, and pop that into set size. So again, pressing the green flag, you should see that there's no size of the snowflake, anytime it's starting, is changing size and changing position. Now I also want to make sure to see if I can change how the snowflake looks, and I can do that by going into looks, 
and finding change so I set the color effect this option here and change this to choose ghost which allows me to make things transparent and choose pick random and let's say let's make a transparency which means how see-through it is between 10% and let's say 80% and pop that in there so now what will happen is when I press the green flag you should see that any time the snowflakes generated some of them are more transparent than others the sizes are bigger so on and so forth great now once I've generated my snowflake I want it to start falling down the way so I want it to start I want it to point down the way and I want it to start moving down so we're going to tell it to point in the direction of going down which is 180 degrees so motion point and direction and again if I say 180 I can you can see there it's going straight down 180 but we know that snowflakes don't, don't always fall straight down sometimes they might go like this or like that so again let's pick a random number pick random so for the 180 straight down let's go between 160 and 200 and then what that'll do is that'll put that pick a direction at a slight angle and start moving and then I'll just choose my control and I shall find my I'll use forever just now pop forever in here and then motion and then move 10 steps I'll change that to say three just now so when I press the green flag you see it falls down at an angle press the green flag it'll fall down at an angle green flag green flag green flag green flag okay now as it's falling down once it gets to towards the bottom we want it to disappear so my snowflakes down at the bottom here now and you can see that the y position is like minus 159 or minus 160 so instead of saying do this forever I want to do it until the y position is less than 160 so I'm going to move this out of the way remove my forever go to control instead of being forever I'm going to use repeat until and I'm going to say for my operators find my less than symbol repeat until something is less than something so repeat until something is less than 160 minus 160 what we want to do is check the position of our sprite so you can find that in motion we scroll down to find the y position of our sprite so what this says is move three steps until the y position of the snowflake is less than 160 then it will stop so if i do that i just press the green flag and just watch what happens i'll do it again so you get a better angle there we go it's falling down and now it's stopped because the y position is less than minus 160. great so this is the basics of our snow falling and it falls down and does this so let's now make sure this now looks like a snowstorm. And in order to do that, I'm going to collapse this a bit so I've got a bit more room on my coding window. What we're going to do is going to unclip our commands from the green flag block and just knock them over here a little bit and replace my when the green flag is clipped with create when I start as a clone, which is in control. So in control, you can find when I start as a clone. So when I start as a clone, I want to do this. And when I touch the bottom, I want to delete this clone. So when the green flag is clicked, nothing's happening. When you start as a clone, it does this and it deletes. Now let's just check that works. So when the green flag is clicked, I want to create a clone of myself, which will call the script here and go through this. And what we should see happening now is that when our snowflake gets to the bottom it should delete
and you saw it delete there. Okay, so let's do lots of these now. So one way to do this, we would start off by making sure that because we're creating clones, we want to hide our sprite first of all. So in looks, we'll find hide. And there it is, hide. So when the green flag is clicked, we're going to hide. And then we're going to go to our loop in control and find forever. And we're forever going to create a clone of myself. So it's going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And then in looks, we'll find show and pop that in here. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to show. So let's watch what happens now. And there's my snowflakes falling down. Now it might look like it's a bit fast and they're all coming in at the same time. So there's a few things we can do to change this. And all my snowflakes are kind of falling at the same speed. Let's just stop that for a second. Once you've got this program working, we can begin to start making it a little bit more realistic. So instead of saying forever create a clone of myself, what we can do at this point is in events, we can choose a weight feature. So I control, sorry. So create a clone and then we'll wait, not for one second, we'll wait for a fraction of a second. So we'll go back to our pick random and we'll say wait between 0 0.1 second and 0 0.1. I know, six seconds. I'll pop that in there. So straight away, what we have is it creates a clone, then waits a tiny amount, then goes back and creates a clone. Waits a tiny amount, goes back and creates a clone. So let's help see what that, what effect that makes now. Press the green flag. There we go. We're going to see our snow beginning to fall, and the more and more it falls, the heavier it will get. If you want your snow to look as if it's getting heavier, what we can do in the clone script is just before we say, before this section here where it says delete this clone, let's remove that to the side just now, go back into control and say, well, just before I delete it, create a clone of myself again. So what this will do is it will call back the clone script and it will start again. So not only are we creating clones of myself over here, we're creating a clone as soon as this one disappears. But as we fall down, as it touches the bottom, it will create a new clone and it will add more snow at the top. And you should see it's getting a bit heavier and heavier and heavier. So again, you can go and start tweaking this code and playing around with it. So for example, if you think the size is too big, let's reduce the options for size. Let's go pick around 10% to let's say 50% of what I made. Instead of saying moving three steps, perhaps what we can do is move a random number of steps. So we can go to operators, pick random and say move between one and four steps. Press the green flag. So now we're getting a bit of a more jerky kind of feel. Some of them are moving a bit faster than others. But we could also try and do something related to the size. So because we all know the size is being set here to a random number between 10 and 50, I can maybe use that to say, well, if you've got a bigger snowflake, it's going to fall faster, so it should move quicker. So instead of saying move pick random here, I could put a calculation in. I could say, let's find my divide sign from operators. There's my divide one. So move, go to, go to looks, choose the size. So let's say if the size has been set randomly to 10 here. Put my divide sign, sorry. Take the divide sign, there we go. So move whatever size I've been picked and let's divide that by 10. 
So what you'll see is that if your size is set to 10, it'll move one step. If your size is set to 20, it'll move two steps. To 30, it'll move three steps, so on and so forth. And what you should find now is that when we look at our, our snowstorm, the bigger flakes will be faster than the smaller flakes. If you want more snow to appear more quickly, stop this, go back to this sprite here, to this script here, sorry. Instead of waiting to a maximum of 0.6 seconds, let's only wait between 0.4 seconds. Press the green flag. And you'll begin to see your snow starts to fall and fall and fall. We'll stop here and you can come back and check out the next video.